Our species has been around for slightly longer than 300,000 years. Across that time, we've come to inhabit the modern world as it is. But when we got going, and for the following 288,000 plus years, no cities or states existed, not even towns or villages. Even something as basic as farming wasn't a thing, although many tools do find their point of origin within the Paleolithic, the time period from the advent of Homo sapiens until the beginning of agriculture. When exactly our species got going is debated. The oldest claim fossil goes back to around 315,000 years ago. But some don't accept that fossil as definitively sapien, and the next oldest fossil comes from 195,000 years ago. We first existed in Africa, and spent some time spreading across the continent and getting more complicated all the while, doing what species other than us don't do nearly as well, if they're lucky to be able to do it at all, namely changing our behaviors to extract resources from a relatively wildly diverse array of natural sources. Exactly where in Africa we began is unclear, but prior to 100,000 years ago, human beings had left Africa and gone on into Eurasia into the Middle East. But this move beyond Africa seems to have been short-lived, and the cold weather that came on had the sapiens retreat to Africa while the Neanderthals took possession once again of the Middle East. Around 70,000 years ago, however, human beings migrated out of Africa again and began to spread out across Eurasia. At this time, there were very few human beings, as few as 10,000, to which all modern humans trace their lineage. After that, we spread to the rest of the world. The fossil record leaves behind traces of this story, and we'll turn to that now. The first Homo sapien, based on both molecular and the limited fossil data, was from Africa. East Africa in particular is a hotspot for our early Homo sapien fossils, but this, at least to an extent, may reflect a sampling bias, as more research has been conducted there than other African regions, and in fact the whole of Africa remains understudied, so watch this space for many years to come. But rather than from East Africa, the earliest fossil evidence of Homo sapiens comes, surprisingly, from the northwest, from Jebel Irhud of Morocco, around 315,000 years ago, where remnants of five individuals were found. These Homo sapiens are classified as such because they're anatomically closer to our species than to any other Homo. But at the same time, its skull is more elongated than ours, and its jaw likely slightly larger, and therefore it seems to represent the somewhat archaic Homo sapien, not a fully anatomically modern one, a so-called AMH. Our next fossil sapiens come from East Africa. The oldest claim is from 195,000 years ago, from Kibish, Ethiopia. Moving ahead 35,000 years, we have more East African Homo sapiens. In Herto, Ethiopia, three skulls were uncovered, along with other bodily fragments dating to 160,000 BP. The adult male skull is slightly archaic, being longer and slightly bigger than modern skulls, and the skulls show signs of having had their flesh removed after death, a tantalizing hint of a possible spiritual world of these early humans. Perhaps these skulls were being designed and used after death as they were later in ancestor cults. Some 38 million years later, or even earlier perhaps, at 117,000 BP the latest, Sapiens were in South Africa, as their footprints come to us from a fossilized sand dune at Langaban Lagoon. With sapiens strewn across much of Africa in relatively small extended family bands by 117,000 years ago, around 47,000 years later, some began to stream out and colonize the world. Soon after 70,000 years ago, the human beings from whom all the non-African human beings are descended from left Africa and began migrating across most of the expanse of the globe's land. There were, however, migrations of sapiens out of Africa prior to then, which we're only beginning to get a glimpse at. Five years ago, the oldest evidence of sapiens out of Africa came from Israel from around 100,000 BP. But a 2019 find of a skull in the Apodema cave in Greece is controversially argued to show that sapiens had migrated to Greece 210,000 years ago, well before the later migration from which later humans would come from. From slightly later, a little less than 200,000 years ago, an upper jawbone and some teeth come from a cave in Mislia, Israel. So human beings made migrations out of Africa before the Great Migration that successfully spread our species across the globe.
From the Middle East, humans made their way along Southeast Asia and likely managed to reach Sahul by 50,000 BP. 50,000 years ago is a significant time, as 50,000 years ago, or thereabouts, something seems to have changed. Nothing in particular can be pointed to, but suddenly human beings seem to have leveled up in some ways, in the capacity for traveling across relatively long distances on water, manipulating stones more proficiently and furthering the sophistication of their tools, and soon enough, cave painting appears. This didn't happen for all humans all at once, and the record of developing human sophistication goes back well before 50,000 BP, but the upswell of 50,000 years ago was first manifested in a couple of places, and after 30,000 years ago, this transformation picked up more rapidly across the world. We see an early sign of this leveling up of sapiens in the colonization of Sahul. The earliest evidence of humans in Sahul comes, arguably, from at minimum 50,000 years ago. These are based on the findings at Majidbib. But this before 50,000 number has come under some fire in recent years, though defenses have been marshaled as well, reality status pending. The second oldest evidence comes from 44,600 years ago from Lili Cave, where fishers are thought to have been catching fish using traps and spears. But by the third oldest evidence, which comes from the Jeremy Lai cave of 42,000 years ago, advanced fishing techniques enabling fishing far from the shore had occurred. And later on in this cave, between 23,000 and 16,000 years ago, the oldest fish hook is known from. Aside from the improvements in fishing, the very fact of reaching Sahul means that the human beings were able to cross a passage downwind and across open water of at least 98 kilometers. Around 28,000 years ago, when they reached Buka Island of the Northern Solomons, they were capable of managing a slightly farther journey of something between 130 and 180 kilometers. Meanwhile, while some humans had made their way east, others were heading northwest. They settled in southwestern France by 42,000 years ago, and they were in southeast and central Europe by at minimum 40,000 years ago. The earliest evidence of these earliest, long-term, brown-skinned European sapiens comes from Cro-Magnon, France, from which they get their nickname, Cro-Magnons. Up until 30,000 years ago, many of these Cro-Magnon populations were living in the same regions as Neanderthals. 30,000 years ago, Neanderthals went extinct, at which point the Cro-Magnon settlement density picks up significantly. Moving up north required new technologies for living in the cold, such as the innovation of the eyed needle for sewing and the spear thrower, which extended the range and accuracy of hunting. Cro-Magnon technologies changed and became more sophisticated across time. Figurative art also begins leaving itself behind, such as one of the oldest from 37,000 years ago in Shaobei Cave. Earlier forms of art in Africa going back to 100,000 years ago are argued for, and there are even arguments for pre-Sapien art. Hopefully we'll return to this area in a future video. Presumably from the southeastern Sapiens, some moved up north into East Asia. Along the Wanghi River in Mongolia, the oldest signs of humans in East Asia appear shortly before 35,000 years ago. The early East Asian people developed the technology seemingly well adapted for the sparse open landscapes they lived on, in which they would have to be able to move large distances to extract the little the environment had to offer them. Namely, they developed a tiny stone technology, which we call microliths. This technology developed from at least 30,000 years ago in crude form, growing more sophisticated and coming into widespread use by 20,000 years ago. About 26,000 years ago, coming from East Asia or from Europe, or some more complicated mixture story we don't know, the northeastern tip of Eurasia is housing humans. Stone tools, along with broken bones from numerous animals, are the remains these early humans left behind for us at Yana RHS, Siberia. It's possible humans may have had to leave the area, however, as 26,000 years ago the coldness picked up, peaking at 20,000 years ago, and sporadic warming starting up 16,000 years ago. The next known human culture of the area comes from the Diuktai people who are known from as early as 18,000 years ago. Moving from Siberia to North America may have occurred on more than one occasion. Some evidence from stone artifacts have it that humans reached the Americas over 30,000 years ago. But watch that space as it's been argued about for a while now. Still disputed is evidence from Monteverde, Chile, that humans had reached the Americas by 18,500 years ago, 
leaving behind traces of what's believed to be their 9 to 13 square foot rectangular homes. Inside the homes are clay-lined hearths and wooden mortars. Being this far south, 18,500 years ago would suggest an even earlier entry still to the Americas. Starting around 15,000 years ago, and picking up between 14,000 and 12,000 years ago, numerous sites bringing indisputable evidence of human occupation have been found. We humans had spread over a bunch of the landed world.